at it. It's been on our socials. I'm not going to go into it too much. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to welcome to the weird carpet stage, <laughs> <laughs> um, Robin. Hi. Well, oh, no, thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, no, Hi, good morning. My name is Robin. I'm a, a musician and a social historian. And I guess you could call me a folklorist too, if you wanted to. That was certainly the job title that my, my mentor, Freud Palmer, used to use. And I travel around the country teaching people about forgotten bits of our island's history through folk song and story with a show called Three Acres and a Cow. So that's my, my bits there. And um, yeah, a big part of what I do is liking to to get people singing along. So we're going to have a little go. <laughs> it's uh, you've had some caffeine, you've had some pastry. Now you might get a few of your your songs. Um, no peer pressure, but if you're in the mood, the chorus goes. Don't you wish you had it now? Three acres and a cow. Can try that. Don't you wish you had it now? Three acres and a cow. Oh, you can make good cheese and butter when you get the cow. Oh, you can make good cheese and butter when you get the cow. So this song is um, 150 years old. You've heard a lot of talk about three acres and a cow. And if they mean to give it us, why don't they do it now? For if I do not get it, I may go out of my mind. There's nothing but the land and cow will keep me satisfied. Don't you wish you had it now? Three acres and a cow. Oh, you can make good cheese and butter when you get the cow. certain class in England that is holding fortune great, yet they pay us all a starving wage to work on their estate. The land's been stolen from the poor and those that hold it now, they do not want to give us all three acres and a cow. Don't you wish you had it now? Three acres and a cow. Oh, you can make good cheese and butter when you get the cow. There's just about room for a dance here if anyone's <laughs> But now there is a pretty go in all the country through Us workers we all want to know what the government will do And what we have been looking for I wish they'd give us now Oh we're sure to live if they only give three acres and a cow Don't you wish you had it now? Three acres and a cow Or you can make good cheese and butter when you get the cow there. That's a little bit of a little song. Um, so that song is was sung 150 years ago by people who had memory of a, an event on this island called the Enclosures, which is when people who used to live in rural areas and work the land were forcibly moved into cities. And it's a bit of our nation's history that we've forgotten about. And a lot of things that challenge us in the present today, maybe around housing or land, often have their sort of origins in bits of history. And if you can understand those bits of history, it really helps us make sense of the present day. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the work I do, what it is and how I came to do it, and then you know, put it in a slightly wider context. So in my twenties, I was a musician in London. I got um, uh, an injury, which I, I couldn't play music. So I spent a lot of time getting involved in growing food, which was a really a beautiful way to spend time. But it got me thinking about land in a way I hadn't before and um, I came across this this journal called The Land Magazine which is a wonderful bit of propaganda and um, I want to stress it's toilet propaganda is particularly good if you can get something and leave it in a toilet and people pick it up and read it you know you've got people's attention <laughs> so toilet hashtag toilet propaganda you know? like next time you're planning your marketing campaign it's like what can we leave in the loo for people to pick up and read it's, it's an understated technique um, and yeah, some other people who were growing food around London, we formed something called the Community Food Growers Network to just celebrate what we were doing in producing good quality food and, and just how therapeutic and beautiful it is to, to work the earth together. And um, connected to that, I just got really interested in history and land and realised I knew very little about the music that, that our ancestors would have been singing on this island. So I found some ballads, read a couple of books, 
and really wanted to share the music that I found and the stories that I found with my community. Um, so I did. This is a, I was upstairs in a pub in Walthamstow and I was expecting about 20, 30 people to come and about, and about 130 people came. And uh, yeah, it got a bit squeezy. People were sat everywhere. And I thought it was just gonna be a one-off, but I got booked for three more gigs off the back of that. And over the last 10 years, it's become what I do for a living, traveling around, teaching people these old songs and um, helping to connect that to the present. So this is my, my little map. Those are places we've done, and uh, the, the more geeky among you will be like, why are they colour-coded? And I'd be like, well, that's the order that they happened in. So the red gigs were the original ones. <laughs> and as you go out on the rainbow, you can kind of see us spreading around the country. And you'll be like, but what are the cows, Robin? And I was like, the cows are places where people have asked us to do gigs, but we haven't been there yet. <laughs> and that, that map's about four years out of date now. I could put a lot more different colours of lollipops on, but you know, <laughs> I like a good spreadsheet. I'm also a fan of a good map. <laughs> um, and some of the places that hosted the work I do, we, um, I spent a lot of time touring around farms and community food growing projects, but we've been hosted by student organisations, um, museums, arts organisations, and, and various other people. So there's been a real broad and, and um, audience for this. You know, the last few things I've done have both been in, in churches, but schools, universities, squats, festivals, all sorts of places. Um, this is my original poster, not very good. And then I did a gig in Southampton and it turned out that there's a, there's a vicar in Southampton who's a very good graphic designer. And he designed that poster. I was like, can we use that again? And he was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, wow, well, graphic designer vicar. Nicely, nicely done there. Um, so, those are, that's our sort of our part of our brand. Um, and yeah, a few bits of feedback from the work I do. Um, I think about this show all the time. It's totally changed the way I think about colonialism, direct action and English nationalism. Thinking about it today, four years after seeing the show, it's clear it was a life-changing event for me. Thank you so much for all your research and positive energy bringing the show together. So people have, have strong experiences coming seeing my work. And ideally, if I'd been doing it last Friday, I'd be like, come and see the show this evening. But the show in Sheffield was last Friday. So <laughs> you'll have to wait. We're doing one in, in Manchester next month, actually. In fact, it's April today, isn't it? Yeah. 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 This it's month, fun. this month. <laughs> and um, yeah, we're being sponsored by Patagonia, who've decided that they really want to amplify the work we're doing. Because obviously people who do um, a lot of outdoor activities in this part of the world probably also go up to Scotland and the laws around what you can and can't do are very different in England to Scotland. Mm -hmm. So um, thinking about why that is and how that might change is something that climbers and cyclists and walkers and other people um, is very much on their minds. So that's a thing. Really important part of what I do is also bringing together people to share food um, or croissants. <laughs> probably in the evening, probably not croissants, but I'm all in favor of people getting together and, 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 and consuming food. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, getting people together to sing and getting people together to share food would have been such an important part of our culture and many other cultures, that, you know, now and in the past. And this is the washing line of history. I wanted to design the work so that I could tour on bicycle. So um, that's why I, I generally carry a ukulele around. It's not because of a sort of specific aesthetic musical decision. It's just like, it's really nice doing my bicycle. <laughs> and the set is this, this washing line that you know I just peg bits of history um to uh and yeah my bum was very hot in that photo <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time it was like where are I for me like you going to stand in front of the campfire I mean I'll look silhouetted and it'll be cool but I'm sure it's yeah <laughs> so I always try and make sure I have guests wherever I'm doing because wherever I'm traveling um in the country there are always people who will know local stories and local histories and be able to share them so um yeah these are some of the guests I, I when i did a show in kent um the local high school sixth form had a folk band and they came and played some of them and those of you who are more aware of the american or english traditional folk scene will know this this lady peggy seeger is like one of the the idols and yeah they say you shouldn't ever meet your idol because it might not live up to their expectations, but I'd, I'd say you should never meet your idol unless your idol's Peggy Seeger, which is you absolutely <laughs> should. She's an extraordinary human being. And this was um, the person I was apprenticed to as a food grower, Rue Litherland, and he was doing some Zapatista poetry um, in disguise. 
Um, I think everybody coming together and singing is really, really important. It's been a big part of, of our culture and sound for a very long time. And um, it's very good for you. You know, if everybody says you should get your five fruit and veg a day, I think you should get your five songs in there as well. And um, there's something about singing together, I think, that can be very, very powerful. So everybody gets a songbook. And some of the songs in the songbook are um, four, 400, 400 years old, the oldest ones that we sing. Um, some of them are not that old, but the spirit is the same in them. And um, I used to work in IT. I'm a big Creative Commons geek, so therefore there is an open source wiki of the show on our website. And sometimes when people aren't able to book us to perform, they use it and they basically just do a sharing of the work without us, which is absolutely great. Um, I really love making sure there's a balance of gender when we're performing and um, yeah, whenever we do shows, always make sure that there's, uh, there's that. And fascinatingly, the people I perform with, one of them is as an ordained Jewish um, Kohenic priestess, one of them is an ordained kind of pagan fella, um, another colleague is a, an evangelical Christian, and um, I spend a lot of time meditating, take a lot of inspiration from the words and, and actions of the Buddha. So. Um, yeah, we sort of accidentally created a bit of a sort of interfaith project as well, which wasn't intentional, but has just happened. So there's some of us on stage doing a bit of singing. Um, and this was me and a few people getting, we had a youth residency where we got loads of teenagers together and taught them all this. And, you know, you can get them young. That's really, really great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been, after a few years, started working in Wales with some Welsh folklorists, musicians, storytellers, and they've devised a Welsh history of land show called Gadael Tir. I think they've changed it to Gafael Tir now, because Gadael Tir means leave land, and Gafael Tir means hold on to it. I just felt a bit more empowering. But um, you'll be glad to know that there is a Welsh song called Three Eggs and a Cow, and Three Eggs and a Cow in Welsh is Tadair or Bilch. And I love going at the end of the word. It feels great. Um, and then, does anyone here play board games at all? You know, it's a few of us. Do you love an expansion pack? <laughs> love an expansion pack. So we've made expansion packs for the show over the years. And the first one, I was commissioned by the Quakers to make a, a Quaker expansion pack. And we called that show jokingly, Three Quakers and a Cow. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, the thing about the history is which bits of history emphasise, you can have a lot of flexibility in that from show to show. And the history of nonconformism and people finding alternative ways of um, having spiritual beliefs is a big part of um, this island's history. So that. And then, yeah, over lockdown, one of my projects was to develop kid stuff, and we're sort of working on a Three Acres and a Calf project at the moment to get people singing some of these old songs. So I'm going to pop back to here, and I wanted to sing you this song. Where is it? This is a song from 1809. And this is a song, um, basically people saying, um, you've taken away our right to keep pigs in the forest. Can we have that right back? And it's written from the perspective of a pig. Um, why not? So uh, apologies to the more vegan um, among you, but this is, yeah, a, a, a slightly curious song. It's basically a pig encouraging you to eat them. But, um, you know, it was probably quite valuable propaganda at the time. And, um, yeah, a lot of folk songs, if they don't have a chorus, you just repeat the last line. So if you're in the mood for that, that'd be just lovely. Ye owners of woodland, with all due submission, we humbly beg leave to present our petition that you will recall this your latest decree, which tells us that acorns no longer are free. Which tells us that acorns no longer are free. In Sussex and Surrey and Middlesex too, pigs may ramble at large without much ado. So why then in Kent should pretenses be found to drive us like culprits and thieves to the pound? To, to drive, drive us like culprits, culprits and thieves to the pound? Since we and our ancestors and others before them have ranged in these woods with all proper decorum. No poachers are we, for no game we annoy. No hares we entrap, and no pheasants decoy. No hares we entrap, and no pheasants decoy. Contented are we if an acorn we find, nor wish for a feast of a daintier kind. Besides, we are told, and perhaps not mistaken, that you and your friends love a slice of good bacon. <laughs> that you and your friends love a slice of good bacon. 
But if a good bacon you all like a slice, if pigs are to starve, how can bacon be nice? For these and for otherwise reasons of state, we again our petition most humbly repeat. We again our petition most humbly repeat. Ye owners of woodland, with all due submission, we humbly beg leave to present our petition that you will repeal this severest of laws, so your wood shall resound to our grunting applause. <laughs> So your wood shall resound to our grunting applause. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, a sort of similar theme going on. Just this idea that there are rights that we used to have on this island that we have lost and they were taken away from us. And sometimes when you look at the inequality around us and, and wonder where that came from, going back to this period in history that isn't talked about often when when we had rights and they were taken away from us um that can be a really interesting place to go looking to try and grow an understanding of that so i'm just going to pop through back through here and um specifically in sheffield we are blessed with a lot of amazing folk culture for a few different reasons one is geographically if you're a folk singer you're probably going to be broke, so you can't afford to live in the south of England. You also are going to need to get down to the south of England. And um, Sheffield has an unbelievable folk scene. So many of our the best folk musicians in England are based in Sheffield. And you can find them, you know, on a weeknight, just out in the wild, just sitting around in pubs playing. So just wanted to signpost a few things uh, specifically to Sheffield. Sheffield carols. We are one of the only places in England that still has... Um, a tradition of singing in pubs, the sort of Christmas carols that you just wouldn't hear in church. And if you've never experienced um, Sheffield carols, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a unique cultural experience that you can only really have in Yorkshire. Um, so definitely worth checking that out. If you Google it, you'll get to a website that details all of them. It's the most 20 year old website you've ever seen. It's almost like just being back in the 90s. There's no animated GIFs, it's not quite that, but you know, it's like proper, like, oh wow, yeah, HTML coding going on. Um, Fagan's, of course, um, a pub in the centre of town that just most evenings, apart from quiz night, has incredible live music going on, although potentially past your bedtime if you're, you know, if it's a school night. And um, yeah, the Kellen Mylan Tabin is a place where a lot of. Um, just a cappella singing happens and it's just being in a room with people just all you know singing together is is a very very beautiful thing so i think that's everything i had i wanted to say um i guess one thing that's a li little bit of interest to me this morning is i'm not sure if any of you found out but yesterday it was announced that an important part of sheffield folklore modern folklore and culture is likely to be taken away from us soon they, um, the landlord has announced that they're evicting the lead mill and um, I would argue that that's a very important part of our current cultural folklore in Sheffield. I'm sure there's certain rites and rituals that most people here have been through <laughs> in Leadmill. So, um, you know, as people in Sheffield's creative sector, we probably have good reach on social media and certain skills that would be very useful to try and challenge that because I think that that's a, a work of great cultural vandalism. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how Sheffield can creatively respond to change that landlord's mind. Um, yeah, so that's my, my closing thought. Um, I was gonna, hang on, let me just check this. There's a, a folk song connected to that that I just wanted to remember. Where is it? Oh yeah, there you go. You used to get it in your fishnets. <laughs> now you only get it in your nightdress. Discarded all the naughty nights for niceness. Ended in a very common crisis. Everything's in order in a black hole. The Bloody Mary's lacking its Tabasco. Nothing seems as pretty. No, I'm getting the words wrong. Well, you get the idea. In a hundred <laughs> years' time, there might be somebody stood here singing that song, going like, you know, Sheffield folklore a hundred years ago. <laughs> and I think it's just important to remember because there's a habit on this island of being like, who is that folk? And if somebody who, you know, is wearing tweed goes, yes, it was because it happened 150 years ago. And um, I mean, I accompany myself with a ukulele, which is a Hawaiian traditional instrument and isn't really part of the UK folk canon. And I just really encourage you to embrace a very broad people's definition of what folk culture is and rites and rituals. And maybe we're creating some of our own by doing things like this. Thank you.
that just to Robin. I'd also second what you said about the Leadmill. I've shared it on Sheffield um, Creative Morning socials. Um, I work there. I've had many a drink there. I've had too many boozy nights there, gigs, everything. So um, I'll be sharing stuff um, when I hear back from them because I have emailed them. So I'll let everyone know about that. But yeah, um, massive round of applause for Robin. <laughs> Sorry if anyone heard my singing voice, I'm not a singer. <laughs> You're not allowed to apologise. <laughs> <laughs> really, though, I'm completely tuned in. Um, but yeah, massive thanks to you, Robin, that was really, Welcome. really fun. Um, massive thanks to the guys at Birdhouse as well for the food and uh, drinks. So, round of applause for them, too. <laughs> and then, last but not least, thanks to Sydney and Matilda for hosting us today. Um, and yeah, Ollie's not here, but massive, massive round of applause for Ollie's <laughs> <all of us. laughs> The next event is in three weeks because we're back on normal schedule, so it'll be the last Friday of the month this time. And um, thanks very much for everyone. Uh, thank you very much for everyone attending today. And um, yeah, hope you have a great few weeks, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. Bye. 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 Bye.